What's going on, everybody? <clears throat> it is January 17th, Wednesday. We've got a pretty huge 10-game slate today. Um, Going to be a big one for me. Not the best of luck yesterday. Uh, had like 298 or 299, something along those lines. Wiggins really sunk me, and uh, I was good with AD and Gibson. Um... But I didn't have Booker or uh, or Butler, <clears throat> and you really needed to have one of those dudes to uh, get up over that cut line. So you know I'm not upset about it, but it was a lower tier night for me. Today's a different day. I hated the slate yesterday, so I'm okay with it. I'm just happy Tyler Eulis said 24 fantasy points. It makes me happy. Um, before I get started, uh, I've had a couple new Patreons or patrons, so I guess I want to. Shout out there. So, Brandon Finley, thank you so much. Uh, Richard Clemens, Keith Rayner, Pawan Patel, thank you guys so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I've been slack on uh, keeping up with that each morning. So, uh, I really just wanted to say, uh, you know, thanks to you guys. Um, but with that said, let's, uh, let's get started. we got a lot of games to do. So, first up, we've got... Uh, Hornets and Wizards. Hornets 107 implied total, which would be 8th on the slate. It's the only 7 o'clock game. I wish that it started at 7.30, so we had an extra half hour. Um, <clears throat> so Kemba is 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. I don't know how I feel about it. He's hit value twice in his last six. It's a good game for him. What's his history against the Wiz? Not great. Okay. He's at a really decent price point right now. Is he down probably a couple hundred bucks? He was in the eights there, back down into the seventh. Okay. Um, just a three for me. Just because of that past history. Uh, it's not normally something I pay attention to, but, you know, Kemba on the Hornets, they're a pretty steady team. The Wizards have been the Wizards for a couple years, so, you know, they play a lot. I think that starts to become a, a relatively reasonable sample size. Now, Dwight Howard... Um, 8,900 on Fandle, which is awful, but 7,600 on DK. It's a decent matchup for him. Um, gets to the line a lot. Uh, Wizards aren't the best at keeping people off of it. He would need 45 on Fandle to hit value, which he's done sort of three out of the last six. You know, 43 and 44 you would not be super upset with. But I think that he's probably just a DK play. I did that backwards. From there, we go to Batum, who's 5,600 and 5,700. 28 for Batum. He's done it twice. I don't really love it for him. Not a guy that gets to the line a ton. Marvin Williams, 4,400 and 4,300. So he would need 22. He's been playing increased minutes again. Um, past four games, he's been 27, 28, 29 minutes. Uh, he's had more than value in three of those games, including two 30-point games. So it's hard to say I would ignore Marvin Williams. And um, he's a three, but he's like a different, he's like a value three. I would expect to see him in a bunch of my generated lineups just because of that price point. Then MKG um, on DK looks really good. He would need 25 on FanDuel, which is a lot for him. But that $4,100 price point on DraftKings, I think, is uh, something to pay attention to.
to the Wizards we go. Uh, Wiz, 105.5 implied total, which would be 10th. It's a huge slate. I'm anxious to see it. I'm anxious for tonight for Locke. Going big again tonight. So I'm going to be bringing my A game. Not that I'd usually bring a C or D game, but usually ends up that way at least. Bradley Beal is 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Uh, so you're looking at 40 and change. I'd like to know how Beal and Wall do against these guys. Um, nothing amazing for Beal. I feel like Wall probably goes ham. Certainly has. It's up to 10 1. That's so expensive. <laughs> But, you know, multiple 50-point games in his career against the Hornets. You need Beal to get to 40. He's done that in four of his last seven. Um, it's hard to, like, not be interested. I can't get comfortable today. Um, now, that's a really good matchup for Beal and Wall. I'm inclined to think that I like Wall more than Beal. But that price is just so much more appealing. Getting Wall to 50, which he's done in four of his last seven. Man, Wall and Beal are on heaters. I don't... I mean, they both look great. I, to me, they're both twos. Why, I don't see why they wouldn't be. They've been playing out of their minds. Um, you know, the matchup is fine. Nothing nothing wrong there. They're coming off of rest. I mean, you know, a day's rest, but rest nonetheless. Washington to Charlotte is not much of a trip. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Otto Porter, 6,600 and 6,100. 33, that seems like a lot. Yeah, it hasn't hit that lately. Um... Probably not the spot for me. And then Kelly Oubre. Been getting a lot of minutes lately. 35 in the last one. Um, you know, 29 in the two before that. If he gets up in that area, you know, it doesn't take much. 4,600 on FanDuel would be 23. He's hit that in three of his last seven. Not a ton of upside in the number, but, you know, you don't mind if you end up with him. And Gortat and Markeef. I'm a little nervous about Markeef's ankle. I'd be interested. You know, it'd be awesome if Markeef would get scratched and you can make a, a smooth transition to Mike Scott. But for right now, you know, you need Gortat to get to like 27. Um, I don't really love that against Dwight. Oh, I can't even try to hunt that down. Guess we need to look at it. I don't know why I went straight to Oklahoma City, but whatever. Gorta and Dwight. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, Gorta not exactly uh, tearing up games against Dwight. Eight points, four points, 15, another four. I'm just going to tiptoe away from that slowly let's go to the next game Hawks hosting the Pels um, Pels two point favorites in Atlanta uh, Pels on the back to back let's check out Atlanta Hawks 109.25 is 6th actually um, so they might be worth a look here Schroeder, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. So you're looking for, you know, 40, basically. That's a lot. Put it up in the last one, 50 in the game before that. Um, the two 36-point games. 
you know, that's not the worst spot in the world for him. Uh, Prince is 5,700 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK, which is crazy. Uh, so you're looking for like 28, two awful games lately. He's hit value once in his last seven. Um, I don't really love it here, but I do like it on DK. Lot of DK good pricing today. Now we get in this little quagmire of three guys that all look exactly the same. So we've got Ilyasova, Bazemore, and Deadman all need somewhere in like the 25, 26 range. Um, I probably feel most comfortable with Bazemore out of that group. I had him two nights ago for the 36, but you know, he's. He had a 40 burger. He's had two 36s in this stretch. Um, you know, Deadman's been at 25 or higher in his last three. I don't necessarily love that against the, you know, the towers, but I'll explore Bazemore for sure. Just a straight three, though. I don't have a ton of interest in Ilyasova either. Has hit value in three of his last seven, but not in the most recent one. So I think I'll just sit on Bazemore. Nothing, nothing's jumping off the page. They're, they're not incredible. To the Pels. Sorry, I hit the enter key there way too hard. It's right next to the microphone. I'm sure that sounded lovely. Then again, you guys listen to my voice for an hour. I can't imagine there's anything in the world much worse than my voice for an hour. Pels, 111.25 implied total, which is third. Oh, boy. Glad I went with AD last night, although ultimately it didn't matter, but put up the 75 fantasy points coming off the 85 in the, uh, the game before that. It's crazy. So Boogie is 11.9 on FanDuel and 10.8 on DK. That is just massive in price I mean to get to 60 he's done it once in his last seven um, it, he's still a deep like it's still not bad but I don't he doesn't jump off the page for me 10-8 on DK is pretty nice but uh, he's just it's just too prohibitive and it's not exactly you know the best matchup in the world Drew Holiday is 7,800 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. He put up 48 fantasy points last night. You need 40 from him for value. He's done it pretty handily in his last three. He's at 48 or higher in his last three. I don't know why his salary is so low. He's 6,700 on DK. Um, much like yesterday, to me, he's a DK one, and he's a FanDuel two. Um... I hope you're playing him at 6,700. It's I don't I don't see how you don't on DraftKings. He's about as close to a lock as you can get. To hit 6x, you need what 36 and 40, like 40. I mean, he's that's just a no-brainer. And then AD 11.7 on FanDuel, 10.5 on DK. Um. I don't love it as much as I loved it yesterday. I think today is probably his step down. Uh, but third highest implied total is something you need to pay attention to. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Because there's 10 games, it, it's hard for me to make any decisions on Boogie or AD, particularly on Fandle with them being on separate positions. I need to see how that shakes out. But... It wouldn't shock me to have neither of them. I would say that I'm leaning towards Boogie over AD in this case. Either site. Um, 
But again, that's very dependent. I'd be su- very surprised if I had Boogie on FanDuel in a 10 game slate at almost 12,000. And uh, I don't really want anything else here. Um, you know, Rondo in a GPP is, is a reasonable play. I'll probably just add him here as a four, but you can't trust the minutes. He played 30 last night, played 24 and 20 the two nights before that, so who knows. Jameer Nelson's back. Ian Clark's been getting a ton of run. Um, somebody that's interesting as a down-the-line punt play. To Brooklyn we go. Uh, the Nets hosting the Spurs. I don't believe there was a line for this one, and I think that I made it up. Um, I have the Spurs favored by 5.5 in Brooklyn. Expectation is that Kawhi plays. Only news that I've seen so far is that uh, no Ginobili. And then for Brooklyn, as far as I know, everybody is in. Um, so let's see... Uh, Brooklyn's implied total would be 16th out of 20, so not the best. God, my projections love Brooklyn. It's so scary. So Spencer Dinwiddie is 6,100 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. He's uh, He's been booming and busting. 54, 9, 45, 30, 20. I mean, you can be getting all sorts of different versions of Spencer Dinwiddie. But ultimately, you need 30. And that's something that he has done. I probably didn't change this filter to the last two weeks. Yeah, there we go. So he's hit 30 in four of his last seven. And in three of those, he has been monstrously above that. Um, He scares me. But, you know, that's sort of something you want to have a little bit in a GBP. Um... I would say he's a three. I'd, it's hard for me to get super excited about this team. Rondé Hollis Jefferson is 7,000 on FanDuel and 6,100 on DK. Um, so we're looking at 35, which he has hit three out of his last seven. I'll, I'll count these, uh, this 34 and this 34.9. He's... I mean, he's, he's, it's a tough matchup. The salary on DK is a little bit more appealing. I can't just disregard them. Like, I expect to see a scattered amount of nets throughout the optimizer, and one of them popping up. But it's just a three again for me. Alan Crabb is 4,500, so that's 22. Uh, you know, he's... The only two times that he went over 30 were both the games that Carroll was out. Um, so I think I'm going to ignore Alan Crabb. I don't like the matchup either. Damari Carroll. He's a guy I've missed on the past two. I didn't notice it the first time. I was interested in taking him on the 13th and the 15th, and ultimately I didn't end up there, and I thought that they were good plays. And, you know, I cross-referenced that with some of the the bigger names in some of the single entry GPPs and they had him. So something's going on there that makes it obvious that you should take Damari Carroll. I'm just apparently not seeing it, but 5,000 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. He needs 25. He's been above 30 in his last three. I don't see any reason to think that that can't continue. So, he's. I think I'm overreacting to the recency. I'm going to say that he's still a three, but he's. I like Carroll more than both of those guys so far. And then Levert is at 5,500 and 5,400. So you're looking at 27. Um, he's hit it in the past two. Uh, it took him a little bit to get his uh, sea legs back after missing two games. You know, again, it's all these guys are just priced in like the perfect way. Uh, If I had to grade these guys out from Brooklyn, I'd say Carol, Levert, Dinwiddie, Hollis, Jefferson. Uh, Karis. Now I'd go Carol, Levert, Hollis, Jefferson, Dinwiddie. 
to the Spurs. 106.75 implied total, which would be ninth on the day. I don't have much interest in the Spurs ever. I feel like they have 45 guys on their roster. There's just always some new dude playing 26 minutes that I've never heard of. Oh, boy. Okay. This is going to get interesting. So... Well, Marcus Aldridge, 8,700 and 8,200. You're looking for, f let's say, 45. He's done that in five of his last eight. I mean, he should just absolutely munch on these dudes. I actually think he might be a two... Although, he's so much worse with Kawhi on the court. Kawhi, same sort of scenario. 90, or he, he would need 45. Um, he's done it in this, the three games that he's played in the past two weeks. Uh, I think this is a really good spot. I think people are going to be on him. It concerns me a little bit about the three ball. I don't love the price on DK for Kawhi. I'm actually going to say he's a FanDuel 2 and a, a DK 3. But I really like this. You got It's a great spot for them. Other than that, Pow at 6,000, so that would be 30. Uh, that feels like a stretch. That's probably it for me on the Spurs. So we'll go to Toronto. Raptors hosting the Pistons. Uh, 111 implied total, which would be fourth. Can't remember the Pistons sort of shot breakdown. God, this is going to be a fun night. Going live at 6. As per usual. Damar, 9,100 on FanDuel. 8,600 on DK. One thing to keep in mind, Avery Bradley is questionable. They think that it's a bum hammy or something. Whatever, I've been plaguing him before. Um... It's pretty interesting. I almost want him to play. I don't want that line to get too far out of hand. DeRozan would need 45. He's done that in three of his last seven. All three of those were 50 or higher. Uh, I don't love the price, but I'm perfectly okay with the matchup. Same sort of scenario for Lowry, 8,000 and 7,500. You know, we're looking for him to get to 40. He hasn't done it recently. It's a better price on DK. I worry about the minutes. If this game gets out of hand, I'm going to say Lowry's just a four. I don't trust it. Abaka, 6,300 and 5,600. So that's 30. Not the best lately. Um, yeah, I'm going to just pass on Ibaka. Jakob Pertl is 4,200 on FanDuel, 3,800 on DK. He's showing up, so I figure I should look at this. Uh, played 27 minutes in the last one, got to 20. If he gets into those mid to high 20s in minutes he's been a decent value i can't just disregard him here but um i think that's just like a a gpp flyer or it should be a four pistons now 102.5 implied total 15th not uh Generally, a, a very interesting total. 
but got the ability to get to the rim. So let's see now. Tobias Harris, 6,300 and 6,600. We need 30 plus. This doesn't seem like a Tobias Harris night. He's hit 30 plus in four of seven. Doesn't get to the, you know, Raptors limit threes, which is concerning. I don't end, I don't think I'll get to Tobias Harris, but it's nothing wrong with it. This one's kind of a bummer. Andre Drummond, 10-1 on FanDuel, 8,800 on DK. He needs 50. He's got a 42-pointer and then two 60-point games in the past uh, week and a half. I'd love to know how he's done against Toronto recently. Rarely good. Um, if you want to have Drummond, it's on DraftKings only. And then I don't really have any interest in Avery Bradley. Ish Smith would need 30. Uh, he had 43 in his last game. He's only had two 30-point games, so he can get there. Um, if that game gets out of hand, I don't think he'd stay in. So, uh, you know, he's probably just a four. I don't, any, I don't want any part of Bullock or Stanley Johnson. So we're going to the Bulls. Bulls are hosting the Golden State Warriors. They are 10-point underdogs at home. But they also have the fifth highest implied total. Warriors, man. Zach Levine's been exceptional in his limited minutes. All right. Justin Holiday, 5,200 on both sites. Mmm. Not a great matchup for him. Needs 26. He's done that in one, two, three, four, five of seven. Um, he's actually been playing, you know, solid minutes even with Levine back. Hard for me to say that I like don't like him. You know, his performance has been fine. It's a tough matchup. The Warriors, though. Chris Dunn. Ooh, this one scares me. 7,800 and 7,100. He needs 40. Um, he's done that three of his last seven. You know, pretty handily, too. I can only assume that the Warriors are a terrible matchup for Chris Dunn. I'm just going to ignore him. That doesn't seem like something... This doesn't seem like a great spot for him. Markin in though, sixty four hundred and sixty three hundred. So you would need thirty two from Markin. He's done that in five of his last seven. Has the ability to get up to fifty five. You would think he's gonna have, you know, all of the opportunities in the world to score. I don't want to go too crazy. If it wasn't Golden State and it was any other team in the league with this sort of same matchup, I would say that he's probably a two. But I could also see them playing Markkanen right off the floor with some, you know, pick and roll that he can't hang in. Rolo is 4,200. He'd need 21. Um, nah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ignore that one. Miritich is 5,900, so he would need 30. I don't feel very safe there. Zach Levine is 4,100 on FanDuel. Um, I'm going to say that I like that, actually. I could see him getting an extra minute or two. Um, I've got him at 21, but there's limited upside there just because you know he's on a minutes limit. But that's a decent price. Like on FanDuel, 4,100 only needs to get to 20. Like he hit 
36 in the last one. That's monster value. Warriors. This one I'm excited to see. I don't... Bulls are such a unique matchup for them. I'm making pretty good time here, too. Um, okay, Draymond, 8,200 and 8,300. You need 40. I think I love that. He's had 40 in one, two, three, four, five of his last eight. The air is just so dry. Makes my nose so itchy. Yeah, I definitely think that's a decent matchup for Draymond. Nothing crazy, though. Durant is 10-6 on both sites, so that's 53. Um, you know, he's had 50-point games in three of five, but he's only been back for four games, two of those over 50. I think Kevin Durant is in line for a big game tonight. I like him a lot there. Yeah. Clay, 7,300 and 6,600. He's 36. I don't love it. Um, he's a DK3 because of the price. FanDuel 4. Steph, 9,800 on FanDuel. 10,4 on DK. Shit, I might like Curry more. Needs 50. Um, you know, in the 40s and stuff recently. Number one total on the board. I think he's a two for me. I'm expecting to have Curry. I think he will be one of my point guards. Grizzlies. Should I skip it? Should I just say, who cares? It's the Grizzlies. I really should. They're not fun to even evaluate. Hosting the New York Knicks. Two-point favorites. Good for them. Uh, 102.5 implied total is 15th. This is dreadful. Mark Gasol is 8,500 on FanDuel and 7,800 on DK. And we need to get into the 40s for Gasol. He's done that in three of his last five. Um, I'm hoping he can get to the line. It's uh, not that appealing. Looks okay on DK. Tyreek Evans is 8,400, so you need the same sort of scenario, 40-something plus. He's done that <clears throat> 3 of 5. Not a lot of guard defense to worry about on the Knicks, but it's just a bad game to get into. Only other thing you want to pay attention to, Andrew Harrison is 3,900 on DK. Uh, at that price, he's a 2. Um, he only needs to get to 20 fantasy points. He's been playing bigger minutes. And at that par price point, I mean, you just... You have to sort of take him and hope for the best. Yeah. Uh, that's probably it for Memphis. Otherwise, I'm just driving myself nuts. Cool. The Knicks. Now is the time where I try to talk myself into taking Chris Stapps Porzingis. I'll make some comment about him claiming that he was tired. Uh, you could probably just go back to all the old videos. And um, whatever I said then will be applicable. 91, well, yeah, 9,100 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. Even to get to 45, which he has done, technically speaking, twice. He's had two other 40-point games. You know, I'm not super worried about the Grizzlies, but if you want Porzingis, you only want him 
on DraftKings. That 8,000 price point is not bad. I don't want Courtney Lee, although again, same sort of scenario. He can be rostered on DK. Ah, so itchy, so dry. Tim Hardaway Jr. Expected to play. 6,400 on FanDuel. 5,900 on DK. You'd need 32. Um, obviously went big in uh, his second game back. I think that price is too high. What did they jump it to? Because they obviously moved it up. Yep. Jumped from 4,500 in this first game back to 5,000 to 5,500 when he sat to 6,400. Now I could just not care about him. Um, I don't think that I want any part of anything else. Those minutes were really weird in the last one. I don't need to beg for it on the 18th implied total. To the Bucks we go. 103.5 implied total is 12th. They play the Miami Heat, who I'm not sure even have players anymore. This whole damn team is hurt. It's getting to be pretty insane. And I'm out of coffee. Uh oh. That didn't paste in correctly, did it? No, it's there. Oh, I pasted the heat in. I'm a dummy. At least it's in there. Anxious to see how Giannis looks here. It would have been more, a little bit more interesting if Winslow wasn't back. Whew, okay. Giannis is 11-6 on FanDuel, 10-3 on DraftKings. I'd like to know his history against the Heat. Not that this Heat team is the Heat, but not very good. I don't love that. That 11-6 price tag is tough the only silver lining is how much the heat foul um, if you can get Giannis to the line a lot that's a, a way to get him to where you need to be he's probably a FanDuel 4 for me I don't see any scenario where I end up with him but uh, he looks a little bit better on DK Middleton, 7,300 and 6,800. Not my favorite matchup in the world. Um, he'd need 36. He went pretty big in this last one, I believe. Yeah, 40. He's boom bust, and this doesn't seem like the boom portion of it all. So I'm going to ignore it. Malcolm Brogdon, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. He's finally getting to the point where his price is uh, a bit of a problem. Was, you know, down in the, f like the high fours, which is when I was trying, basically rostering him all the time. Um, now, not so much. You need him to get to 30, which is probably too high. Uh, he's a four for me, just because I think he's good. Not like crazy good, but I think he's good. Uh, Bledsoe, 7,300. Hasn't really been someone I've been looking at lately. That's 36. He's hit that one, two, three times in his last seven. Um, decent matchup for him. Uh, he's probably just a four, though. Not somebody I expect to get. And again, it's not the best matchup. He's They've got the 12th implied total. The Heat have the worst. So, uh, John Henson, though, on DK. Arid bled, so I'm a moron. Uh, Henson on DK is 4,500. Um, so, you know, 6x would be 28. He's had two 30-point games. Uh, I think that's worth exploring. Now Miami. So 
not expected to have Tyler Johnson. Um, so they are obviously incredibly thin still. They have the 99 point implied total, which is dead last. I don't even know what to make of this. It's not a Wayne Ellington game. It's probably just Josh Richardson, who was, I want to say, really bad in the last one. Am I remembering that correctly? Nope, I'm not. Tyler Johnson was the re rolled his ankle. I knew I had somebody. Um, uh, Richardson needs 30. He's done that in four of his last seven. Look, I'm not going to get crazy over this game. It's a terrible, terrible game to have a part of. Um, I'd explore Goran Dragic. 7,100 on FanDuel means 35, which he's done. One, two, three, four of his last seven. He's had some pretty monstrous games. I know Bledsoe is a, you know, a pretty good defender, so I don't want to get too crazy, but I think that a three is fine, and I don't think that I want to go to anybody else. I guess I need to look at Kelly Olynyk though. Played 28 minutes in the last one, put up 34 fantasy points. He's 4,400 on FanDuel, which would be 22 to hit 5x. Um, could very easily do that in 24 minutes particularly um, against the Bucks, Not exactly the best defense. But let's just get out of that game. We'll head to Oklahoma City, where the Thunder put Paul George on display for the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. Haha. -ha. So, Thunder... 111.5 implied total. They are 11 point favorites at home. Um, no Lonzo is the expectation for the Lakers. Potentially no Ingram, although right now I have him in. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, a monstrous game for the Thunder. Potentially. Let's free, or let's split that window. Actually, I should just freeze the panes. Oh, no, it doesn't look ridiculous. Cool. Okay. Russ is 12,000 on FanDuel. He's 11,6 on DK. Uh, Lonzo's actually, like, not that he's, uh, you know, a good defender. I, I don't think that he's a, an exceptional defender, but the team defense has actually been better with him on the floor. So... For Russ to get to 60, which he's done just once in his last seven, um, but I feel like this is the spot for him. I would probably prefer Curry from a uh, value perspective, just because of that price being under 10,000. But, um, I mean, I, I would have no problem loading up on Russ if you guys feel the same way. Paul George, 8,300 and 7,500. You need George to get over 40. He's done it twice in his last seven. Uh, I don't see any reason why he can't let that continue. I don't necessarily love the price, though. Mello, 6,400. You would need 30 as well. Or not as well. He would need 30. He's had three 30-point games in his last seven, one at 29. Um, not the best. They limit the mid-range, so I'm going to pass there. Steven Adams. 6,900, so that would be 35. He's done that. He's had three 34-point games and one 46-point game. Um... It's fine. I wanted to like this game a little bit more than I do, but a lot of it screams blowout. Go to the Lake Show. Lakers, 100.5 implied total. 18th. Um, like I said, the expectation is no Lonzo. 
Uh, this one's going to be dreadful, but something's going to pop for value just from a minute's perspective. Somebody's going to be getting into it. Nance or Lopez, maybe. Okay, Brandon Ingram, also, like I said, also uh, questionable right now. 6,600 on FanDuel. It's a bit of a stretch. Um, 33. Been there twice in his last seven. Uh, he would probably get a steady diet of Paul George, so no thank you. KCP, 32 minutes, 5,600 in salary would be 28. 42 in the last one. He's had two other 30-point games since his minutes have ramped back up. Um, you would expect him to get all that he can handle in this game itself. Concavius Caldwell. Hope. Uh, just a three, but, you know, he looks okay. Kuzma needs 30. Uh, done in the last two. Hopefully that's a mini renaissance for him. Again, it's hard to get too excited about this game because of how bad uh, the game could play out. I'm okay not having any Randall. Larry Nance at 4,800. We need him to get to 25. He's been playing extra minutes sometimes um in the games that he has gotten the increased minutes you know he hit 44 36 29 if he gets those minutes uh he has the potential to put up a lot of value brooke lopez is 4100 you would need 20 um i'm okay there that's just forcing it particularly against adams two games left kings and jazz I'm going to be perfectly honest here. I don't have a damn clue how to project the Kings minutes right now. Uh, Dave Yeager came out yesterday and said that uh, from this point forward, he's going to be resting like two or three of the veterans on the team. Um, they're going to be going particularly youthful moving forward, which is great. Um, the problem there is that they play at 10 o'clock tomorrow or tonight and, uh, to figure out who's not playing and who that benefits, we might never have that info. Hopefully at shoot-around we can get some info as to who's going to sit. But for right now, I think I'm only going to have one recommendation here. I want to see if I'm crazy first. Now he's been getting the minutes. So the only thing that I would recommend that I can be confident about now is Scal on DK is 4,300. I'd, I'd say that that's a three. Um, something's going to open up here. But right now, eh, actually, we can say De'Aaron Fox on DK is also a three. Other than that, I want to know more about who's not going to play and what value that could open up, but I don't. I can't make that decision right now. There's not enough info. And all of their prices kind of suck. So it's going to take moving someone from like, you know, if we find out Malachi Richardson's going to start and get 25 minutes, then Malachi Richardson's in play. Or, you know, if we find out George Hill is going to sit, you know, we could take a deeper look at Fox and Buddy Heald. But right now, I'm good. We're going to the Jazz. Jazz. 103.25 implied total is 13th. Another reason the Kings uh, not that interesting. They have the 19th implied total, uh, second worst on the night. So I'm not going to spend my time force feeding Kings into my lineup until I know what's what. Uh, Jazz implied total uh, 13th. So first up, really like Donovan Mitchell there, particularly on DK. He's at 8,100 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DraftKings. Um, you need him to get to 40. He's had 40 just once in his last six, but 30 and above. So at the, at the very least, it's a high floor. Um, you know, kings are shit. So especially if they're going youth, that benefits Mitchell even more. Um I might be comfortable saying he's a straight two. I just have a good feeling about it. Yeah. 
Uh, Joe Ingles. He's, um, you know, not everybody's favorite. Had the, the 2.5-er in the most recent one. I won't have him on FanDuel at 5,700. But at 4,700 on, on DraftKings, you know, mid-20s. Has the potential to shoot a bundle of threes. It's a it's as good of a matchup as Joe Ingles can find for himself. Um, he's a three for me on DK. I wouldn't ignore him. Um, favors. Sixty nine hundred. Can he get to thirty five? He's done that twice. Uh, I don't really love the price or the matchup. Rodney Hood fifty six hundred and forty nine hundred. 28 for Hood. Um, I had him in that 15-pointer. That's just kind of... Look, Rodney Hood can go for 40. And it seems like against Sacramento would be the sort of game where he would do that. I'm going to pass. Rubio at 5,200. We need 26. I had him for this 12-pointer. Not awesome. Um, but he has the ability to get in the 30s, so you can't just write Rubio off. It's a not awesome matchup. So I'm going to make him a four. Last game. Clippers hosting the Nugs. Um, Clippers 108.5 implied total. I have them as four-point favorites in Denver. I am expecting... I have DeAndre Jordan out. Fantasy Cruncher actually had him in. Um, and I believe RotoQL has him out. Yeah, so I'm going with the assumption that he's out. Um, let's take a look at that now and see how that affects everybody else. So Lou Williams is 8,900 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. Man, that's a monster price. You need 45 out of Lou. He's done that one, two, three, three times in his last four games, including uh, a 50 burger and a 59 point outburst. I don't think that, well, this is something that you've basically never had to do um, with how healthy uh, DeAndre has been in his career just like as a guy that basically never misses time. I'd like to see how he impacts people when he's not on the floor. It's one. I guess I should say that there's also no Austin Rivers. And no Beverly. There's going to be a very tiny amount of minutes. Yeah. Harold, on the other hand, looks like he's going to be getting quite the boost. A little bit of boost to Lou Williams. Nobody getting something crazy. Like, Harold gets a big boost, but he's only played 94 minutes with DeAndre, so you can't go too crazy, but slight boost to everybody. Um, I mean, Lou Williams' price is just a little bit too high for me. I'm going to say he's a four because I can't get totally away from him, but Blake, 8,700, 9,000. You would need Blake to get to 45. Um, he's done that twice in the past two weeks. He had 48 in the most recent one. Um, seems like it would be a really good matchup for him. You know, you'd be seeing, like, you know, Trey Lyles or... Yeah, I don't... If for Millsap were there, it would be different. Um, I think Blake's probably a three. I have some interest in Tyrone Wallace. I might be a little high on his minutes right now, but he's been playing a ton of minutes. You know, he's played 30 plus in his last four, so I have him at 31. Maybe I'm maybe I'm not crazy there, uh, but he's a he's a two for me. At 4,300 on Fanduel, you need him to get to 20 something fantasy points. 
Uh, I think that's like his floor. <laughs> well, I'm about to be uh, I'm about to figure out how that, how wrong that can be. Uh, Taya Dosich. He needs 25. He's done that just well. He's done it twice in the past two weeks. Um, I don't think that Murray is a very difficult defensive matchup. But still just a three. And then Harrell on DK is exceptional. And obviously this is with the assumption that uh, DeAndre doesn't play. Um, I'm going to say that Harrell is a four for me on FanDuel. He's actually a two for me on DK. I think. 40, well, 45 on this. 24, 27. Yeah, I, it's fine with me. Gotta send the wife a text. Can hear her making coffee. Now, finally, we go to Denver. Nuggets. 104.5 implied total, which is 11th. Nugger. What do we got? Ooh, I don't know about that. Gary Harris, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. So you need 35 out of Harris. He's had three 45 point games in his past eight. No reason to think that he couldn't do that again, but oh boy, is that price uh, a bit of a problem. FanDuel 4 for me, DK 3. Jamal Murray, just 9 fantasy points, 6 in the game before that. He's just been dreadful lately. Uh, he's 5,700 on DK, though. It's hard to walk away from that. Um, I'm fine with fading him on FanDuel, but on DK, I mean, he's still a, th he's probably a two. I'm, I'll, I'll beat that drum. Jokic is 9,600. He had 65 fantasy points last night. I was not on him at all, so it's kind of a bummer. <laughs> um, he needs, you know, 47 or so. He's done that one, two, three, four times in his last six games if there's no uh, no DeAndre you would expect that to be a, a awesome spot for Jokic but it might be a little bit prohibitively expensive and then Will Barton 5500 on DK uh, hard to get away from that he's a DK too uh, he's 6800 on FanDuel I don't even want him um, and then Wilson Chandler is just like a perpetual three now, if he fits, he fits. But that's it. That is the list. So let's toss this into the optimizer. Let's see what gets spit out. We'll do FanDuel first. added a bunch of crap that actually isn't projections, unfortunately. Try that again. I'm anxious to see what pops up here. We'll do 20. Bump that up to 10. And bam. Well, that makes sense. Tons of Tyrone Wallace. Not surprised there. Russ, Steph, and Durant are all scrambled in a group of three. They're in half of these lineups. Levine and Markinen. Those are things that totally make sense to me. So I would say, like, 
Wallace, Curry, Levine. Yeah, I could end up with something. Something like that. Ooh, Dwayne Dedman. That's surprising. I'll have to look into that. Ended up with a lot of Rolo and Dedman. It's going to take a deep dive into center. Not sure I like that on uh, FanDuel tonight. Let's check and see what DK looks like. This one's going to be so much different. So much value with some of these positions. It's insane. Didn't see a lot of AD or uh, Cousins on that optimization run, which is interesting. Do 20 DK. Yeah, a lot of Harrell, a lot of Andrew Harrison as expected, a lot of Drew Holiday as expected. You know, you're going to want to have all three of those guys right off the bat. That lowers me down. Um, I did like Boogie. Where would we get if we had Boogie? Man, I like that a lot. Holiday, Harrison, Mello, Porzingis, Cousins, Brogdon, Harold, Nance. That one looks okay. That looks okay. That, I, I would probably explore that one. Kemba, Drew, MKG, Markinen, Cousins, Harrison, Harrell, Mello. Yeah, that's where we're at. All right, guys. Whoa, you didn't want that screen. Oh, you didn't want it again. Uh, that's all from me. Uh, I will be back tonight at 6 o'clock, live before lock. Huge night, we're going big time tonight. Um, but you know, you guys know the drill. Like and subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter. Check me out on Reddit. I'm around. Best of luck tonight. Bye-bye.